What's up guys, Jay Siemens here today. We're at Lake of the Woods and we're doing a walkthrough of my new Alumacraft boat. Well guys, here it is, the walkthrough of my new boat. And this is the 205 Competitor Tiller by Alumacraft, the Shadow Series. We've got a Mercury Pro XS, 200 on the back. Today we're gonna go for a little rip and I'm gonna show you the features and what makes this boat such a big, mean fishing machine. First thing I should talk about, obviously, I upsized big time on the motor. I went from a 90 to a 200 Merc Pro SS. And Mercury has their own power steering system, which allows you to have, you know, a big tiller on the back of the boat. So this is unique to Mercury, this steering system. And as you see, there's hydraulic hoses coming out the side. So I'm gonna show you this one compartment here. This is where the power steering is stored. So there's the hydraulics, I guess is the term, that powers this arm. This is crazy, this thing steers easier than my 90. So basically how it works is, the only way I can turn this motor is by touching somewhere on this handle. If I touch anywhere behind that, if I try to hit this, I can't turn it, it's locked in. So it's, it's really safe because, you know, with your conventional tiller handle, you know, you take your hand off and the motor can swing to the side if it's not locked in. I, I've done it before, I've let go of the handle and almost throw myself out of the boat. Beauty of this is if for some reason you just need to take your hand off, your hand slips off, it's not gonna move. So right now, it senses when I'm putting pressure on this, with one finger, I can steer a 200. You've got the thumb trim, which every tiller should have. Um, this one also has the RPM adjustment on the side, so I can idle it down a little bit. The shifting, it's like a digital shifting. So when you shift, there's a slight delay, and then it's doing it for you. It's not like an analog shift. It's a V8. As you heard when it started up, this thing sounds like a race car. You, it's a very distinct noise. If you've ever been around a Mercury Pro XS, you know that you've been around a Pro XS. Enough talk, let's go for a little bit of a ride and then uh, we'll keep explaining what we all got here. First impressions on the Merc Pro XS, this thing's a beast. Like I can see why so many, so many of the pros, so many of the tournament guys you're seeing with these motors, um, it's fast. So the fastest I have seen on this boat, on the GPS was 52 miles an hour. That was by myself, half a tank of gas, minimal gear, with a ton of gear. I think I had a ton of gear and seven people in here. My, my entire family was in here and I still hit, I think it was like 45 or 46 miles an hour. So like, it's really easy to hit 50 miles an hour with this boat. Uh, the prop I have on here is the 19, pitch inertia. Um, I haven't played with other props. That's just the one that uh, Woodlake, the dealership I got it from, recommended. Another question I've gotten lots is, you know, the back trolling speed. So it does have the RPM adjustment. And let's let's test it right now. Let's see what sort of back trolling speed we can get. All right, so right now back trolling, I'm hitting 1.6, 1.7, 1.5. You know, it's speeding up a bit here. That's basically with no wind. If you had, you know, wind, you could, you could back troll a lot slower. Somewhere between 1.5 and 1.8 for back trolling with this big motor. Yeah, so now I'm, I'm in forward. As far as speed there goes, I'm hitting somewhere between 2.5 and 3. That's in glass calm condition. So if you have wind, you could troll down slower. But since we're in the back of the boat, let's keep going. We've got wave whackers. I've had these before. And last time I did my walkthrough video, I said something wrong. I said these were plexiglass and I was found out I was definitely wrong. They are polycarbonate, which I'm told is a lot more durable. Wave whackers, if you have a tiller and you don't have wave whackers, you're making a mistake. Basically, you know, for back trolling, that technique I was just talking about, it stops the waves from splashing over the back. Um, otherwise, when you're in reverse, you got a bunch of weight in here and the waves start coming over, you'll fill the back of your boat. So wave whackers are definitely, definitely key. Obviously, you can cut this rubber on the side here to make it fit around the motor. And then this drills into the hull. You can take these off. So I do have the ladder on the back. So if I wanna go swimming or for scuba diving, I can easily just screw these off and take the entire pieces off. They're really nice if you're like have a bunch of rods resting off the side too i've seen people you know put rod holders on the side there to strap their rods in definitely would recommend getting wave whackers on the back of your boat um, and then the talon this was another upgrade from last time on the other one i had the 12 foot talon now i went to the 15 footer so this is the biggest size you know minkota makes the reason why i went with you know a talon version 
um, instead of like a Raptor or a power pole, the type that deploys the arm down, is this is like one of my favorite filming angles in the boat. So right on the top here, I JB welded a GoPro mount. I done it on my last Talon. This is just like a safety angle. I run a GoPro on here all the time. It captures the entire boat. It's nice and wide. It's perfect for that. It's, it's something you might not think of uh, if, if you're not filming for me. It's, you know, it's pretty key, um, but as well, 15 foot talon, it obviously is that fiberglass arm that sticks down 15 feet. It probably anchors effectively in, I don't know, I would say 12 to 13, depends on the bottom. You're not gonna anchor in 15 feet because then it's just gonna be scraping on the bottom. You wanna be, you know, a little bit shallower so that, you know, the shallower you are, the better it's gonna grab. Um, but yeah, 15 foot talon, I have a sandwich bracket on the back here, we'll inset a shot of that. And then I also have a spacer bracket to keep it off the back. I haven't had any issues with one talon on a bigger boat. I know some people on their, their boats, heavier boats, they might have two talons. One has been good for me there. All right, we're gonna keep walking our way through the back of the boat here, but the fuel tank is massive on here. It is 45 gallons, 170 liters. I haven't done the math with fuel consumption, how far I can go, but you can go a very long ways on that gas tank. This live well in this boat is giant. It runs all the way from here to over here by my left leg. It is 33 gallons, 125 liters. It's, it's huge. There's a front live well in the front. I'm never gonna use it on this boat because this thing can fit any, anything you need in here. So on the left and the right, you've got two doors, but what's pretty cool is there's, you can you know, use a leech hammer, you can use a little bait bucket, and it's got a little insert right in here, so you can just clip it in, and then your bait always stays there. You're not searching for bait throughout the live well. The other thing to mention about this live well, it's got a high-speed pickup, which is nice, meaning it picks up water when you're going fast. It's got the recirc, so it can circulate the water. Yeah, it's good. We'll keep looking at the back here. All right, so in the back here, we got our batteries here. We have two Optima AGM ran in parallel. This pretty much runs everything in the boat except the trolling motor. So this runs five graphs, two live scope modules, uh, the interior lights, stereo, the dash, all that stuff. So there's a lot running off these two batteries. You wanna have good batteries. Obviously they do charge off the Merc Pro XS alternator. We've got the Minn Kota onboard charger for charging these two. Um, you might ask, why not have lithium on the back? Well, at least for Mercury, I'm not sure what other brands, they actually um, void the warranty if you use a lithium cranking battery. And that's not something I don't wanna void the warranty on a brand new motor. So anyways, I think that's something in the future that'll change because lithium is taking over. But right now, if you use a lithium battery, um, it could potentially void your warranty. So uh, something else I'd recommend just with, if you're hooking up lots of graphs and stuff, you get these at TH Marine, I think they're called Nautilus. I'm not sure, Hydra, Hydra maybe they're called. Um, but they're basically these posts that go on. It takes your, your battery post and it gives you five connectors on it, which is super because we're always hooking so much stuff up on our boat. So it just helps clean up the mess a little bit. All right, next thing I gotta talk about is this captain's chair. I've had the captain's chair before. My last boat, I didn't have it. Now I got the captain's chair again. It is amazing. It is definitely uh, more cushioning than the uh, stock seats, but it's got an air ride as well, which obviously just cushions any blows when you're on rough water. It's got the armrests and some of this stuff maybe you'd be like, ah, I don't really need the captain's chair. Once you have the captain's chair, you're not going back. Check this out. If you're doing some bottom fishing, like it's pretty, it's pretty luxurious. Anyways, love the captain's chair. Very good. It slides forwards, backwards, depending on what you need. All right, we're at the command station for a tiller guy. You know, you spend a lot of time at the back. That's why I have the tiller because it, it allows you to fish fast. You don't always have to run up to the front and drop the trolling motor down. That's one of the tough parts with the steering wheel with the tiller. You can slam it in reverse, watching all the grass right in front of me and I can be dropping down on fish. So it's amazing for vertical fishing, walleye fishing. Um, but yes, I've got three graphs. I've got a Helix 12 with mega side imaging. I've got a Carbon HS9, which has their side imaging as well. And they've got an Echo Map Ultra. Uh, this is the 106 SV, so 10 inch. So 10 inch screen, nine inch screen, 12 inch screen. Um, they all have their distinct purposes. Hummingbird I use for side imaging. Lake Master Maps, the Lowrance I use for sometimes 2D and the Angler's Edge mapping. They do a bunch of mapping in Northwest Ontario and Manitoba. And then on this one, you've got the Garmin Live Scope. I keep this on Live Scope all the time. So as far as transducers go, they're all mounted off that side. Um, I have noticed a little more interference now having all three brands, but that's just the nature of it. In the back corner, um, I have the Live Scope transducer permanently mounted. And that allows me to sharpshoot, like drop down on individual fish. Um, it's always in the water. So if you mount it just right, you can be scanning 100 feet, 150 feet ahead of the boat while you're on plane, which is amazing. I love having the three screens because there's no perfect graph. Each graph has its pros and cons, and it's nice having all of them. I know it's overkill, but it's nice, it's nice. Behind it here, you've got this mounting bar, and then you can see what I did on the back here is I actually put a bolt through there, 
and a bolt through here and this permanently mounted it out. So now I'm not gonna be sliding it back in. This is made if you have you know one medium sized graph or two graphs that you can actually slide this back in. There's a little handle that you can close it and lock it. Now I've permanently fastened it out because I got these three screens that wouldn't fit in there anyways. Locks this and makes this rock solid so it's not bouncing all over the place. And then it frees up all of this for storage. So now I have this for tools, cleaning supplies. I've got all my networking and some live scope module stuff back there. So just one more compartment now. Running over here, you've got the dash. So you've got fuel, speed, um, voltage, uh, Bluetooth, stereo as well, right here. There's a little USB port for charging or for auxiliary for tunes. And then as far as the uh, switches go, you've got lights. I didn't know this until recently, but the Shadow Series comes stock with the interior lights, like that underglow type look. In the past, I've had my own strip lighting that I've ran underneath. This bowl comes with its stock, so it saved me a step and it looks amazing, it's so nice for night fishing. Um, you've got your live well pickup, bilge, it's an automatic bilge I noticed on the 205. You've got the horn, and then underneath, you've got the trays. Um, these are lockable as well. I keep a lot of miscellaneous stuff in here, but often my release tools, so bolt cutters, pliers, toothbrush, toothpaste, the important stuff, some fin clips, some of the essential odds and ends, if that makes sense, that I want you know, near me, that I want in the boat all the time. So that's pretty much it for the back end of the boat. We're gonna go for a little boat ride, maybe do a little fishing, and then uh, we'll show you what else is going on in this boat. All right, we're gonna keep working our way forwards. It feels like we've talked about so much and we're not even like halfway up the boat. On the side here, we got, the, this is the like probably biggest, longest compartment in the boat. You can do side rod storage in here. Rods up to 10 feet long. So fly rods, which is amazing. You don't have to take them apart. As you can see, I added a measuring tape along the side. Yes, I have verified that this measuring tape is legit. We can hold, we can hold a, a measuring tape up beside it, just so the haters out there don't say that I uh, have a shrinked measuring tape. But anyways, I have this on the side. Um, you know, I would still bring my musky bumper, bump board to get quarter inch measurements and because it's, it's a nicer material for the slime on the fish. If I'm quickly wanting to, you know, slap down a slot size walleye, this is perfect. In a pinch, if I forgot my bump board, I would make sure to get this wet first and you could measure a musky on this. Obviously like carpet and this uh, aqua traction wouldn't be ideal on a fish, um, but this is definitely better than carpet. But anyways, let's look inside of here. This is where 80% of my tackle is gonna be on the boat. This is where all the trays are, so I've got them all labeled. It's super easy if I just need to pull, you know, walleye rigging box out, it's all right here. This is the easiest. So this is most of my tackle, but if you wanna put rods in the side, this compartment's actually 10 feet long. So it goes like all the way till somewhere in there. So this is all empty space underneath here. So, I mean, if you wanted to put, let's say one piece fly rods in here, this would be the side I would put them in. But yeah, massive compartment. Across to the other side, you have the cooler. This is an insulated cooler. It has a drain in the bottom. So this is where I keep my drinks, a couple ice packs, keeps your lunch cold all day. It's perfect. Next compartment, just more storage. Down below here, you've got the live wall open close. So this controls the live wall in the front for it to drain. There's another switch in the back to control it. Here we've got the speakers for the stereo. This is a little bonus compartment you don't have in the 185 either. Holds three tackle trays, which is perfect. All right, and here's a secret compartment and this is actually where I keep my onboard charger. I'm all about, you know, trying to maximize space. Even though there's a ton of storage, there's no reason not to be smart about how you rig things. So if you pop this out and you look underneath there, this is actually where my onboard charger is for my Dakota lithium batteries underneath. I'll show you the batteries yet, but this charger is totally tucked out of the way. All right, now we got the rod holder. This, I, I really don't use the side rod holder too much unless I'm using fly rods. This middle one is the one I use 99% of the time. It can hold up to nine foot, four inch rod. So this rod right here is a nine foot musky rod. And as you see, I can still push it forward. So I still got a gap in there. That's amazing. Like being able to fit a long rod in there because there's nothing worse than being able to fit nine out of 10 rods or whatever, or whatever it might be and you can't fit them. So being able to fit the long rods in here is super nice. I'm actually gonna pull all the rods out right now. Uh, the bottom level is a little bit shorter, but the top level is where you can fit the longer ones. All right, so I easily pulled nine rods out of there. So you can pull this bracket out. This is what holds whatever the eight rods. You pull this out, you can fit twice as many rods in because then they don't all need to sit on the 
on the back there, you could probably fit 20, 25 rods in there. I don't really need that many, but if I was doing a big road trip, I would pop that out, use some rod sleeves and just as many rods as you need really. Here, I drilled a little hole and that is where the onboard charger comes out for my lithium batteries. In the 185, I had to cut an extra hole in there, which probably voids the warranty. I'm not sure it's something I wanted to do just to save space. Like I always say, saving space, saving space. The 20 footer has three slots for battery, so I didn't need to cut that extra piece out. But there you've got one 100 amp hour to go to lithium. And then you're here, you've got the rest of the juice. So there I got three. This is a 36 volt system, 112 pound Altrex. I tried this system last year when I was pre-fishing for KBI and we fished for three days, long days, lots of driving around with the trolling motor, just like looking around and we weren't able to kill it. I mean, I would say three days of tournament pre-fish is probably like four or five days of like typical fishing for myself. So I'm not worried about needing to recharge these. Like I have no problem going multiple days on the charge. So lithium is amazing because you're cutting the weight. So it's half the weight and they last pretty much twice as long. So you're, you're trimming like, I think it's like 150 pounds when you switch. It is an investment. It's an 11 year warranty, which is incredible. You know, their life cycle is longer. They can survive for more charges. And then as far as charging lithium batteries go, you can use normal chargers. You don't need a lithium charger. So you can use, I, I think a lot of people use the Minn Kota precision chargers on that. The only difference is you're not gonna be able to top it up to 100%. I think it'll only charge it to like 95%, which is still tons. So if you just have, you know, a Minn Kota charger, don't wanna buy a new one, use that for your lithium batteries. It's gonna be fine. I know there's new Minn Kota chargers coming out with specific lithium settings and it's gonna help you top up that little bit. But anyways, let's get these rods back in here. All right, moving forward, these two compartments look very similar, but this one is a live well. This one is the dry storage. You can pull it out here. They look almost identical, other than the fact that this one has, you know, a drain, an overflow, a light, and then the pump. So what I did, because I don't have need for a second live well, that back live well is so big, it's obviously the calmest place for fish being further back, so they don't get bounced as much. So it's like, well, that one live well does everything I need. So what I did is I sealed up every opening on this live well. I used a little marine silicone. I made some little homemade caps. I taped up the, um, you know, the pump. There's no water getting in here. So now I've just doubled, you know, these dry storage compartments up here. I use it for rain gear, life jackets, toilet paper, all that stuff. All right, these front two compartments, they're both identical. They are just, yeah, more storage. Storage, storage, storage. Keep some spare gear, spare trolling motor prop, you know, my boat safety kit, bumpers, extra life jackets, extra bilge pump prop, fire extinguisher. You can fit so much stuff in here. Like, the, the amount of storage in this boat is just insane. I just take a lot of stuff for camping gear, for camera gear, for everything. It's just, it's nice having all that along because you never know what you're gonna need. Then at the front here, so the trolling motor on the front is the 112 pound, 36 volt Altrex by Minn Kota. I think the shaft is 60 inches on this one. That's the longest they make. I wouldn't want any shorter of a trolling motor just because it would come out of the water. There are days where I need this trolling motor all the way down. Um, I thought about getting the Garmin Force trolling motor this spring, but the shaft is just a little bit shorter and it's just, I don't want a trolling motor that's gonna come out of the water all the time. Uh, the downside of the Altrex, like the reason I have the Altrex is it's so responsive. It's ideal for, you know, mounting the live scope on there. I have the LVS 34, the new live scope uh, transducer. The problem is this pedal is tethered. So it's like, if I'm musky fishing with someone else, they can, I can work the pedal here and they can fish there, but it's not ideal for, you know, in a guiding scenario like that. If I was guiding more, I'd either have an Altera or a Tarova. Um, but for me being at the nose of the boat, most of the time the Altrex is great. It just, it's tough for those situations where I want to, you know, put someone else in front of me. Um, and then as far as graphs go, we got a Helix 12. This is just GPS um, sonar. And then we've got another Echo Map Ultra 10 inch. And this is what I use for live scope. So most of the time it's exactly the setup. I got mapping on the bottom. I got live scope on the top. Yeah, that's pretty much it. My live scope module for this one is tucked into the front here, which is just a mess of wires. But that's where my spare light is. My uh, Hummingbird Hub live scope module. This flooring, I know I haven't talked about it yet. There is a previous video, I'll link it below. The stuff is called Aqua Traction. My boy Cade came up from North Dakota to install this. Um, this Aqua Traction foam, I'm not sure what, you know, what the proper terminology is, but it's amazing. As you can see, I customized it. I got Catch and Cook on the left. I got Headbanger on the right. I got the Alumacraft logos, Aqua Traction logo. I got that measuring tape I talked about, and it's so nice. Like I am fishing barefoot so much because it's so soft. It cleans nice. 
and um, it just, it looks so sharp. I mean, you can do like any sort of designs you want in it and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is my first time using it. I've only had it in the boat for a couple of weeks and I'm a huge fan. It seems to clean off really easy and it doesn't get too hot. All right, a couple other things I wanna talk about. All right, so on the gunnel, there's a lip all the way around here and this is something called the Illumitrack system. So this metal bracket, they actually had plastic ones in the past and they came with a metal one this year. Pretty much you can mount whatever you want onto these. They have uh, options for like, tool holders for your pliers, drink holders. Um, probably the most common use for the Illumitrack system is rod holders. And in the past they had plastic ones and I'm very excited that they came with metal ones this year because these are rock solid. Um, I have a couple with these salty rod holders mounted on. So this is amazing for musky trolling. You can crank this down really tight and like a fish is not, like nothing's happening there. It is rock solid. Those plastic ones, they had a little more play and they were good for 90% of applications, but for musky guys, like you want rock solid and that's what that metal Illumitrack system is. So the nice thing is you just loosen it up depending on what you're doing. Let's say you're catfishing, you got a bunch of people in the boat or, you know, I use these for camera mounts too. So I have a camera mounted onto one of these and I can slide it around near me here. Like how sweet is that? Crank it down, boom. And now I've got a rod holder right beside me. So big fan of that. All right, so there's so many different spots if you wanna put seats. This this boat came with a bunch of seats, obviously by, by myself, I'm not gonna bring the other ones along, but you've got one, two, three, four, five, six spots to put seats. Obviously, you're not gonna be riding with the seats up here, but you can have two people up here sitting and jigging, which is nice. If you're, if you're guiding, it's great because a lot of people like to sit especially older folk in the boat. So that's, that's great to have a lot of seat options. Um, another thing, lockable storage. All of the storage on the Shadow Series is lockable. So if you're, you know, parked at a busy lake, it is nice to lock all these compartments. Well guys, I mean, that's a lot of the accessories, features and all that stuff. But I think like one of the most important parts is the hull. It's a 2XB hull, which means it's double plated. There's two sheets of aluminum, it's durable. These boats last forever. The first Alumacraft my family bought, they're still using, it's still bone dry. That boat hit a lot of stuff. And yeah, that's why I run an aluminum boat. It's rough country up here, as you can see by the Canadian Shield all around. You hit rocks. It's not if you're gonna hit a rock, it's when you're gonna hit a rock. And these boats handle it, you know, as good as any. The 20 foot as well, it's a big notice in bigger water for cutting across those waves. You might not think it makes that much of a difference, but once you're driving in choppy stuff, it just has that little more distance to, you know, cover the distance between waves on those on those rough days that I might've slowed down a little bit. Now I can keep the throttle down and uh, doesn't uh, doesn't bounce me around as much. Well guys, that's that's a lot of talking, a lot of info, but that's that's I think I think I covered everything in the 205 competitor tiller by Lumacraft. This is the Shadow series. It is 20 foot, 6 inches long, 96 inches wide. So wide, so stable. You can musky fish 3 people out of here. I was walleye jigging 7 people in this boat the other day. That's what I love about this big open concept. Big flat platform all the way. There's no lips to trip on. It's flat. It is so much dance floor, so much room for fishing, for filming. Um, the fact that it's a tiller, there's no space taken up by a console. I'm in love with this boat, Dreamboat 2.0. I cannot thank Lumacraft enough for uh, partnering with this channel many years ago. And um, if you're looking for the tiller of all tillers, check out the 205 competitor.